What's up, everyone? So, uh, I was trying to record this, and I made a little intro where I talked about how, unlike my last video, how even though I liked doing it in one take, I was going to try to not do this one in one take and do some editing and stuff. But it was just because I felt, like, mush-brained, and, like, I probably couldn't do it in one take. Let's grab the Coke. Yo, everyone, take a second real quick. All my straight edge friends, get yourself a Coca-Cola or get yourself a Pepsi-Cola and pour that shit down the fucking drain and then go get a Coke. Uh, all my all my 420 tokers, get, get your mind right real quick. Just a little one, we don't want to be silly. And uh, if you drink, that's on you. I mean, I don't, I don't like to encourage that behavior. Anyway. Uh, I never meant to take a break from YouTube or Twitch. That wasn't planned. That wasn't intended. Uh, so me and my previous partner had kind of been having issues. But I thought we were working through them. And uh, they went to go, like, house sit for their mom for a couple days. And the police showed up at the house and served me a three-day eviction notice. In the middle of COVID. When I was living on unemployment. So, uh, I got put out. Uh, I was getting $450 a week in unemployment. And, uh, I was joking and finessing. And I was doing what I could to make it work. I was staying in a motel room. Yo, so I was in Bellingham, Washington. I'm gonna be throwing things on the screen throughout this. I am just doing this live in OBS in one take for y'all because I really like in the last video how it felt like old school YouTube. Like it felt very conversational and that's the vibe I wanna have on this channel. There's certain YouTubers like uh, Milk. Really Milk is who has like sold me on this style of content because I feel like I know that dude from watching his videos because it's like he's just having a conversation with you. So, that's kind of what I'm trying to do. Um, so here, let's throw this up on the screen. Do, 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 do. Sorry, I'm just closing all my extra tabs. Uh, I haven't been using OBS, so I'm a little bit sloppy. So, I got straight up just like kicked out of the house. And uh, I had to go stay in a motel. And after a month, the motel didn't want to let me stay there anymore because then I would have fallen under the guidelines of the eviction moratorium. <sighs> so it was just a whole thing, bro. Now, luckily, as you can see, I have an apartment. And this isn't a room. So I have a little, like, it's called a micro studio. I just have a little, like, 200 square foot thing. My bathroom's right over here. And then upstairs is like a big kitchen that like all eight of the units share. But it's real clean. Everyone's respectful. Everyone's mad cool. I'm in Capitol Hill in Seattle. I'm working full time. A little bit more than full time. Like I'm getting no tea every week. I'm doing good. I ain't gonna lie. I had been clean that time period mainly because of the relationship I was in. My partner largely enabled that and helped and made me feel like that was something worthwhile to do. Uh, I started fucking up pretty bad. And uh, I am in a weird place with um, drugs and drug use. I'm okay. And I mean that. But uh, it's just not really like a topic I want to talk about right now. Uh, opioid crisis is basically on an indefinite hold. The band that I do because... Putting out the demos and building up the momentum and booking the string of shows that we booked, it would have been really fucking cool. And it would have been the right way to start a new band. But with all those shows getting canceled, it's like we, 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 we ruined our own momentum out of the gate, or COVID did. Yo, so check this out. Let me make this a little bit bigger. I was living... 
just for like you know viewers who aren't really familiar with the geography of Washington like that. So I was living way up here by the border in this town, Bellingham. And it just wasn't working anymore, guys. Bellingham is a super, super small town. And going from, like, having three jobs and working at all places downtown and being super visible to being a fucking bum, I just couldn't do it again. I couldn't do it again. And, you know, coming down to Seattle, it was way easier. Do you all know how I got a job? We have this burger place in Seattle called Diggs. So I would just sit up there with this every night. Abolish for-profit prisons. Tallboy, what would we do? Come in. Me and Tallboy would just sit out there with this. And um, between that and the unemployment I was still getting, I was able to get this place. But um, I was just, I was using a lot. And I was in a really, really bad funk. And I didn't want to make content. Or be on Twitch or play video games. And I didn't have internet in my apartment for the longest. Hi! This is Tallboy. I, I realized I didn't introduce him in the last video. Tallboy is six years old. I've had him since he was like six or seven months. He traveled all around and rode trains and did all that with me. He's also from Florida. Tallboy, look up here. He's a pit bull whippet mix. But anyway, me and Lauren were engaged. And uh, I just got switched up on so fucking hard that I just, I didn't feel like making content. And uh, I didn't feel like doing anything. And I probably would have bounced back way sooner. But COVID, there's no hardcore shows. I don't know how else to like really meet people. I'm going to be honest, like, as happy and as cool as I think it is that now that I'm the age I am, I'm like, well, damn, if I really started going to shows hard when I was like, let's say 12, let's say 13, I've been going to shows well more than half my life at this point. I have more time with skin in the game with this hardcore thing than I do not. And I'm proud of that. And I, I know for a fact. If I had been able to go to shows and be around my community and meet people, I would have bounced back from this way sooner. But I just, and I'm grateful that I got a job. I'm grateful that I got an apartment. I don't want to be hopping trains right now, you know. I'm glad I'm not making videos from my phone like, look, I'm riding freight. Because I know there's a bunch of like train hopping TikTokers and stuff right now. I'm so fucking grateful for all of this. But like every day, I walk the same way to work and the same way home. Um, I don't want to say where exactly I work at, but um, I'm a security guard at a really popular restaurant. And I mean, if you see me there, it's in Seattle, it's on the hill, say what's up, I don't care. Like, say hey. Um, but there's a show on Saturday. And I haven't even gone yet, but just knowing that I am going to go to a stacked hardcore show and be around people who who like the thing that I like, who love the thing that I love, I just feel like I have a battery on my back again. And I, I don't think we talk about it enough. I'm going to do this real quick so I can get the map off the screen because I want to get serious for a second. So I was living up here in Bellingham. And uh, I'm smack dab in the heart of fucking Seattle now, baby. What's up, baby? Uh, and the show, if you are in the Washington area, yo, come to Real Art Tacoma on Saturday the 19th of 2021 in September. The show is so stupid stacked. Anyway. I just already kind of feel better, dude, like, better enough to, like, I don't know, I don't want to ramble, I don't want this to be, like, a uh, ranting video, I just kind of wanted to get on here and explain where I've been, 
and apologize for just like being like, hey, I'm gonna start this YouTube channel, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do that, and then just straight up disappearing. I was just starting to get momentum on Twitch and average three or four viewers at a time concurrently, and I just disappear. So I know I have a lot of work I have to do. So that's what I wanna talk about. Sorry I never made the homeless tier list. I will eventually, I promise. I, I got thrown out of my fucking house, dude. Sorry. But, um, the show on Saturday, I have already been networking and talking to people and trying to figure it out. And, um, I'm going to interview a few dudes from some bands. I'm going to try to interview the promoter, if he'll let me. I'm going to, I'm going to do what I can. There's already a lot of people, people you should be aware of, you know? Hate five six. All the respect in the world. You're spreading fucking socialism, communism, and hardcore. Like, literally, the reason that I was like, wait a second, isn't, isn't this like a Glen Hammer a hate symbol? Isn't that like a swastika? And looked it up and found out the Soviet Union wasn't evil evil, just that America wanted you to think they were evil, was because Hate Five Six used it in their logo. And I knew that Nazi shit wouldn't fly in hardcore, so I had to look it up. I was confused. Uh, my, my, I'm honored to call him my friend, Cameron, uh, Cameron Nunes. He does, like, work with CU Space Cowboy and other bands, and he films sets. There's already people who are really fucking good at filming hardcore shows and posting them online. I'm not trying to occupy that lane at all. What we don't have represented for hardcore on YouTube, though, is... A space to have conversations. And I, so we have Axe the Grind. And Axe the Grind's great. But I'm just gonna be real, it's not on YouTube. Um, there used to be people that did band interviews and stuff. And I just feel like it's always been camera on the guy, question on the screen, and then band dude answering. And it's never like filmed super well or like a production. And here's what I think is wrong with that. And here's what I want to fix, right? The reason that I love hardcore so much is like, I remember when I used to do little odd jobs from the promoter back home in Florida, you know, this one venue called The Pit on Beach Boulevard, sometimes it would be full of chairs and we would just have to pick up all the chairs, almost like gym class when you have an assembly back in school and you have to get all the chairs and move them, you know? And, uh, you know, the dudes in the bands would help us move the chairs. Here, here's this dude that, like, I'm listening to their, their record all the time on MySpace or whatever at the time, and I think they're so fucking cool, man. And they're just a normal guy, man. They're gonna, they're gonna help me out, you know? And, um, the stage... I can get up and dance on the stage and jump off the fucking stage, like, in hardcore... Granted, some people are just, but that's just a respect and a love thing for what they've done for the culture. It's not that they're actually better than anyone. It's just they're treated with a certain level of respect because they have skin in this fucking game. And I, I don't mean me just because I said that phrase earlier. I'm talking about like your people in, you know, legendary, iconic bands. Like, obviously I'm going to speak to... I don't like name droppings. I'm just trying to, like, I would speak to Scott Vogel from Terror a certain way because, yo, that's the fucking dude. You know? He's been doing it for decades. So just, you know, who would I be to come at him sideways? But at the same point in time, in hardcore, who is anyone to come at anyone sideways? That's one of the conversations I want to have. So that's what I'm saying. Rather than this... Ooh, I hope I didn't just throw something on my computer, man. You guys are really seeing it all. Rather than this, here, I'm holding my phone in your face. Here, I have a question. Breakdown for a hardcore interview. I think Adam from No Jumper has kind of, like, cracked the code for, like, what a hardcore interview should be. It should just be two kids who love the same thing sitting across a table from each other having a conversation about hardcore, about life, about values, about whatever the fuck, comic books, cartoons, religion, 
philosophy, cryptocurrency. Like, there's so many conversations to be had filtered through the lens of hardcore. And I don't think I'm better than anyone. I don't think I'm smarter than anyone. But I love to talk to people. I spent a lot of time living on the street where my whole job was just to be likable enough to get people to give me money. <laughs> and I, I want to understand everyone. I, I just have like a very curious mind. And I, I feel qualified to do this. So... I'm going to just start trying to talk to bands. Um, now, my first couple of videos, they're going to suffer from the exact problem that I was just talking about. It's going to be, you know, me holding a phone. Talk, I'll, maybe I'll do it with selfie cam. But, you know, like, I don't have, like, a space yet. But my vision, what I want to do is when a, when a band I want to fucking have a sit down with is coming through Seattle... I want to be able to hit them up and work it out to where they can come to a space. We can sit down and have a conversation. I can make a video out of it. They can play one to three or four songs for the video and maybe like a small live audience, maybe. And then we can put all that on YouTube and, you know, have episodes. And then maybe do like a vlog for each show. And uh, focus more on just, like, moshing and, like, the fun parts of being at and around a hardcore show. Because, like I said, there's people like Hate56 and Cameron who actually document the band playing and the show better than I could ever fucking hope to if I started trying to do that at my age. Because Cameron was coming to every show and filming it 15 fucking years ago before the idea of posting to YouTube or trying to really like make money off going viral or something like that was anything fucking close to what it is now. And I don't feel like being late to that party. I feel like I have my own take on this and my own way I want to approach this. And I think I can make really, really interesting content that will help people understand hardcore a lot like what Finn is doing with his channel. But whereas Finn is really good at sitting down and being like, what's up? Here is subject X. Here is Y and Z, which leads us to A, B, and C being true. Which then we can extrapolate D from. Sorry for doing an algebra problem, right? What I'm trying to do is just be like, yo, we out here. Hardcore pride. We fucking out here living. This is what being at a lit hardcore show is in terms of the vlogs and have honest conversations with people in our culture in hardcore who are doing something cool. Like, do you know how much I would love to be able to just like sit down across the table from fuck just like I'm trying to think, but like, again, I don't like name dropping. So it's hard for me to just pick like one band or something. That's like a smaller band. Zulu, like, do you know how much I would love to just be able to sit down and have like a 45 two to two hour conversation with the cats in Zulu? And then get to watch them play a couple songs? Because I think that conversation goes everywhere. I'd want to talk to them about the Hey Arnold shirt because I fucking, I love cartoons. I'd want to talk to them about social justice issues because I know there's at least one Marxist in that band. Or at least I hope there is. Uh... Just, you know, like, that conversation writes itself because those are interesting people. They're doing something fucking awesome for the culture of hardcore and for fucking black culture at the same time. And, um, I have a curious mind. So, that's what I want to do. I'm, I'm, I'm playing with names. I'm bouncing around ideas. I'm thinking about what I really want it to be. But um, I'm going to be at this gig on Saturday. I'm going to film some content. I don't want to put myself on too hard of a timeline because I don't know how to use the I don't know how to use anything but OBS. And basically, this is kind of a pitch too, dude. Like, if you're watching this, if you think this is a cool idea, yo, hit me up. Let's let's collaborate. Do you know how to edit video? 
do you know how to grow a YouTube channel? You know, like, I'm not going to pretend I know how to do this. I just think it's a good idea, and I am committed to trying. But I've never been one to uh, be too proud to ask for help. So, if you if you think what I'm saying and you is a good idea and you see the vision and what I'm talking about and you see what this could be, hit me up. Uh, with that being said, since I don't know how to do a lot of this stuff, I don't want to put myself on too rough of a timeline, but uh, I will have the video from the show this Saturday out before October 16th. I'm just going to give myself a month. Might be a little rough in the editing. Uh, like I said, I, I think part of the appeal of this is that it kind of has like a old school YouTube, just being vulnerable and talking to the camera vibe. And um, like I said, I think there's a lot of people who do an amazing job documenting bands' sets, and I just kind of want to capture part of the like the feeling of like being in the parking lot with your friends in between bands and like just being silly and horse playing and trying to talk to girls and you know just all the stuff that happens at a hardcore show all the other stuff and like moshing like there's some bands where it's like i'm watching the video and i'm like man this is cool like i understand why we're filming the band but god damn it i wish i could just select like a mosh pit camera because I know this shit was a war and there were kids getting broke off left and right and I want to see that shit, you know? Because, like, when that's the shit. We, it's not like we, like, love it when our friends get hurt or anything, but it's, like, when no one's trying to hurt anyone on purpose and it's just one of those bands, like, fucking, when Kids Like Us plays in Florida and just everyone is just actually being moved by the fucking music and just pops off and loses control for a second because like all that shit in your real life that fucks with you doesn't matter when the riff hits you know like yo sometimes someone gets their nose broken and that shit i wish i could have a little mosh cam so i could get a gif of it you know so yeah i don't know and i think it would be funny lou ratchet has really inspired me because i watch his skits and i'm like how has there not been, like, a hardcore skit, dude? Because there's so much funny shit in hardcore. Like, I have an idea for a skit, like, things we did in 2004 that would not fly at all today. Like, do y'all realize I used to come to shows when I was, like, 14 and grown-ass men would yank my basketball shorts down to try to uh, embarrass me? Bro, imagine if, if I, as a grown, late-20s male, walked up to a 13-year-old boy and yanked his pants down right now. At a concert. And I'm not saying the dudes who did it to me were fucked up. They were just hazing me. But I'm also acknowledging that if I did that right now, I would probably go to fucking jail. And I think, I think there's a super funny skit there. And I'm like, how has no one done this? Maybe there's no audience for it. Maybe I'll fall flat on my face. But um, he who dares wins. And if hardcore has taught me anything... It's that if I, if I believe in something, I just have to try. So I'm going to try. And I'm going to be vulnerable. And I'm going to be honest. And that's, that's it. Hardcore Pride. Uh, I'm Darby. If you made it this far, thanks very much. I'm going to put my email and my Twitch and all that uh, in the link or in the description. We're at the 24 minute mark, but, um, yeah, everyone have a good night.